Countdown to kickoff continuing. Let's head out to Buffalo with Rodney McKissick of the Buffalo News. Rodney, we could talk about Ryan Fitzpatrick, the quarterback situation being unstable, all of that, but your colleague Bucky Gleason called the Bills' offensive line the most unstable unit and is considered by most to be their biggest flaw going into the regular season. I ask you then, what is wrong with these big guys up front? Well, for starters, they, they probably only have uh, three NFL caliber offensive linemen um, among the unit. And uh, you, you start with Eric Wood, the big center, uh, who's moving over from guard. And then you have Andy, Andy Levitri, the left guard, but he's also seen some time at, at, um, at left tackle. And then uh, Demetrius Bell, who kind of struggled a couple weeks ago and was actually replaced briefly um, in starting rotation by Andy Levitri at left tackle. Uh, those are your three guys you gotta you gotta build your line around. And then um, you gotta you gotta finger uh, depth at this point. They really don't have much depth behind those three guys, and even the two start the uh, other two starters along the line. It, 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 there's not much depth, not much quality depth, not much experience. And uh, when you add it all up, you have a very unstable line. One offseason signing that surprised me was Brad Smith coming to Buffalo. He obviously played for the Jets. He played Wildcat for the Jets. He's listed at quarterback. How will he be used this year? He's going to be used in a number of different positions. He's going to play quarterback in the Wildcat. Uh, he did that in their last game um, against Jacksonville. Uh, he's going to be put in the slot. You're going to see him wide a little bit. Um, you're going to see him in the uh, punt return game, kick return game. So, they're going to find spots for, for, for Brad Smith to play. Uh, it was a matter of um, – the, the reason they signed him was it was a matter of the Bills trying to score some touchdowns. They needed to do something to spark that offense. And uh, Smith is a very, very versatile player. So you're going to see him in a number of different spots throughout the lineup. And what about C.J. Spiller? He, he seems like a dark horse, seemed like a dark horse last year in fantasy. Um, an incredibly talented player. What are the expectations in year two for him? Um, the, the, I guess the thing that the Bills have, are starting to realize is that CJ is is more of a Reggie Bush kind of player, and what that means is he's not an every down back. But you're going to see him in the backfield, obviously behind Fred Jackson. You're going to see both of them in the game at the same time. You're going to see CJ split out wide. You're going to see him in the slot. Uh, he's also going to be in the punt and um, maybe not the punt game so much, but definitely in the kick return game. You're going to see a lot of C.J. Spiller. But you have a versatile player who can be electrify, electrifying it once you get him the football. Did the fans feel, and put yourself, I guess, in their shoes for a minute, did the fans feel it was a slap in the face for Paul Puzlesny to leave the team? I think initially they did, but I think uh, Paz's reasons for leaving were, were, were pretty legit. I mean, he wanted to be a 4-3 middle linebacker. That's where he thrives. That's what, he, and he just wanted to be in that position. And the Bills play a three-four. Uh, he, he's at, he's in Jacksonville now, and he's um, they played the they played the Bills last week, and he, he didn't look bad as a four-three middle linebacker. But um, really, that that all that went away once they signed Nick Barnett out of Green Bay. Uh, you have a guy who has, in my mind, better credentials than Plus Lesney. Um He's a, he's a, he's a couple of years older. But um, he's, he's more consistent, and I think that's what the Bills' defense needs, some more consistency. So in essence, did they sort of upgrade from last season to this season? I, I understand losing the second-leading tackler in the NFL is a huge loss, but getting Nick Barnett, having Sean Merriman healthy, do they feel like they have a solid linebacking core this year? Yeah, absolutely. They, and uh, unlike the offensive line, they have really good depth at in, at the linebacker uh, position, you have Chris Kelsey, who I think is making a decent transition to to a linebacker from a um, a four three defensive end. You you have Sean Merriman, who's going to try to come back for some some bunch of injuries. He's been looking pretty good in training camp. Nick Barnett's in the middle, and then um, and then you have Kirk um, Kirk Morrison at um, at the middle linebacker. So what you have is uh, four guys back there who are really experienced. Um, they, they, they bring some veteran leadership. They, they can make plays. Uh, they, they've been known to make big plays. That's one of the things about Paz. He didn't make a lot of big plays. He made a lot of tackles, 
but he didn't have that one memorable play or, or a number of memorable plays. This is more of a fantasy football question to ask you. Stevie Johnson had 10 touchdowns last year, receiving touchdowns. Do you expect a similar number this year? Uh, I know a lot of fans are expecting similar numbers, but uh, I would have said he probably would have increased that number had they kept Lee Evans and not traded him away to to Baltimore. Um, Stevie's going to get a lot of double teams now. They're going to shadow him a little bit more. Um, and uh, it re- it really remains to be seen whether he can he can take that or not. Um, uh, the last year he was he took a lot of the um, he t- Lee, Lee Evans took a lot of pressure off the kid, and he had a really big year. He was almost a Pro Bowl. I I, I think he probably should have made the Pro Bowl last year, but uh, it's not going to be the same thing this year. And uh, he's going to have to have that number two guy step up. Maybe that's Marcus Easley. Maybe that's Roscoe Paris, but he's been banged up in training camp the last couple of weeks. So it remains to be seen whether Stevie is able to take that pressure. Let's head out to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash TYT Sports. Evan Wright asks you, am I the only one that doesn't like the new helmets? <laughs> no, I think the uh, the new uniforms and the helmets in general is um, it's, it's kind of gotten a mixed reception up here in western New York. Um, I, I think a lot of people like the old school helmets from, from the 60s. I think the majority of the people prefer those kind of helmets. Uh, I didn't I didn't have a problem with the, the helmet they had um, uh, before, before they, they made this recent switch. But um, it seems to me that that the, the, the old school people like the, the old school helmet. Lastly for you, Rodney, over under five and a half wins for the Bills. Oh, man, uh, I've been asked that uh, a number of times. I'm going to go I'm gonna go under. So you're, th- think you're thinking five wins? Is, I think they'll get, they'll, they'll get the five wins. I think the defense has improved enough where you won't see guys running for 200 yards a game like last year. That happened eight times last year. You figure, you figure if they could cut that in half, that they should be able to win three or four more games. The offensive line looked pretty good last week against Jacksonville, but Jacksonville had a, a few of their pass rushers missing. And so nobody touched Ryan Fitzpatrick. But uh, I still think there's way too many questions on that line to, to give them any more than about five wins.